Hello guys and welcome back to the Motor Recon Podcast. I'm your host Adam. I'm joined again today by Rob. Um, so now we are just kicking off season three of the podcast amazingly already. Which yeah, is, God. Uh, which I mean, is how many episodes is that? Uh, this will be the 21st episode when this goes live. Blimey. So that's actually uh, a good milestone just there to kick off season three. So what we thought we'd do is, just because it is a new, uh, a new season start, we set ourselves a little challenge, didn't we? So... Um, as you probably know if you've been listening for a while, I drive a Fiesta with the one litre uh, EcoBoost engine. Yes. So, as, as well as, as well you. As well as me, yeah. yeah. Um, so, what we thought we'd do is we'd set ourselves a little challenge and just see how far we can actually get on one tank of fuel. Yeah. Because this car claims to be obviously very economical. It's like, that's what it's basically built for and that's what it prides itself on. So, we thought we'd challenge it. And off yeah. the bat... I would say it proved itself to be economical. It did, yeah. I think it did, actually. Especially on the challenge we set it, because we didn't do, we didn't go out specifically like hyper miling it as in doing everything. We, we no. basically we drove the speed limits everywhere, so up and down hills, we did motorways, country roads, everything, yeah. a full file mix of everything. We weren't hyper miling on the motorways, but we you know, we no. were at the speed limit the whole way, so you know. Yeah, the speed limit on uh, speed limits there. Hit the cruise control. Con- yeah, cruise control yeah. on and just see. Obviously, now, if you do it with your own foot, you can probably get a little bit better if you're very gentle. Um, but the claimed MPG for my particular one, which is the 125 horsepower yeah. version, uh, is 65.7 MPG. Yes. So that's Ford's claimed figures of what they will sort of, you know, they'll be able to do. Now, we all know that actually getting up to those figures requires yeah. God driving either, you know, hither unto none. Yeah, because I've seen this number a few times kicking around, obviously, when I bought the car and things like that, and I thought, is it actually possible? Well, it, so, it's interesting, isn't it? Because there's always that debate going round about whether the tests that they actually use are even representative or not. I think it is a good... Um, it's a good sort of standard to set purely because maybe the results aren't necessarily that realistic, but because every car does the same test, they at least can be compared against one another. Yeah, in, so, in, that, in, te- in yeah. that test. Yeah, so, so one thing I will mention is when we were doing this drive, because it was fairly warmish, we did have the aircon on. Yes, we did. So that might have impacted us slightly. Um, so you could probably add one mile per gallon on if you were so inclined to do that. But I would say as well, it was largely fast. Well, you know, it was reasonably fast driving as in. Yeah. It's not like, I know aircon has a lot more of a detrimental effect if you're doing stop start around town. Yeah. I think it's, I mean, don't quote me on this, but I think it is better when you're up and running. So when you're doing 50, 60 mile an hour or whatever. Yeah. So I'll, uh, right, so I'll kick off. So what our journey was, basically, we set off from home, where we live. Um, we bring the tank at yeah. the nearest petrol station. Then we reset everything. So we reset the trip computer, the MPG, the average MPG, average speed, everything. Mm-hmm. And we set off. And we thought, well, we'll head north and just see how far we can get. Now, we did turn out, we did actually run out of land. Yes, we, we did. We, yeah, did we get, actually ran out of yeah, land. We, yeah, we did get to John O'Groats. Now, from the petrol station where we set off from, that was just under 500 miles. I will put the official number on the screen right uh, in a second. I think it, what was it, four? Four nine something. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll put it on the screen anyway when it comes up. Now, I say on that journey, we averaged 53 miles an hour the entire way. Yeah. So that does give you an, sort of an insight into the type of roads we were on. Even the even the country lane, uh, country roads as such were 60 mile an hour limits. Yeah, I was actually very impressed the fact that all the way up to the very top, it's not like things got really sniggly and difficult. They were no. they were fast, nice flowing roads the whole way actually. Yeah. Yeah. So we we originally thought just doing a bit of working out and what I was normally getting when I would just drive to and from work and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we estimated we would actually reach Inverness. Yes. Um, obviously, as you now know, we surpassed that by quite a way, um, by another 120 miles, and we still hadn't run out of fuel. Yeah. So what we did was, when we got to John O'Groats, obviously we just had a little bit of a rest, because, you know, it was a long drive. It was about eight, nine hours, give or take, with a few little stops on. It's worth mentioning there was three of us driving. Yes, there were. Yeah. There were three of us taking turns at driving as well, so that's three different people's driving styles coming into it there. True. Um, but we did try and be as consistent as possible. Um, and on the on this journey, so from from the petrol station to John O'Groats, we averaged 59.1 mpg. I think that's pretty amazing, actually. Yeah. 
I can't I can't think of a reason to complain at that. I know they claim sixty five point seven, but like I say, we weren't we weren't we weren't hyper miling. We were doing the speed limit everywhere. Um, they like say we even at some points I suppose we could have done better, but. But that being said, we're humans, and this is the point, isn't it? As real humans driving normally in the real world, we were actually able to get a little under 60 mpg. Yeah, and I think at some points during the journey, before we actually got off the motorway, I did see it was just above 60. Obviously, then the country road sort of brought that down a bit because it was a lot more hilly and obviously a bit, a little bit of stopping on traffic. A little few cars going a bit slower, a bit faster and things like but that. As you so, say, you'll notice in the corner of your screen somewhere yes i'm uh, going to put a sort of a brief sort of the time lapse of my dash cam footage that was just going up there and i will mention it did overwrite some of the footage so it's not all there but it, we've got us setting off from the first breakfast stop at 9 a.m yeah so that, we that was were literally already, yeah. we were just into scotland weren't we yeah by that point? so that was already three hours into the journey by 9 a.m yeah and um, so it starts from there and it actually it skips out a few bits in between but then it goes to as we arrive at john o'groats uh, and then there's the final little drive down to the petrol station yeah yeah. Um, from there so I'm pretty proud of that 59.1 it's not too far off what the manufacturer claims and we have looked on a, on a website here in the UK um, we have there's a uh, thing called Honest John yeah um, where real world people submit their MPG figures for basically any car so if you are interested obviously give it a look oh it's a fantastic resource yeah and yeah. so it's uh, a lot of people have submitted for this Fiesta obviously it's a very popular car so there's mm. lots of submissions the real world MPG average from obviously people submitting their own is 44.7 so that ra- yeah. that ranges from thirty three point six to fifty five point five. Heaven knows what the thirty three point six MPG people are doing. Now I but- have the same engine. So um, do you know what you roughly get? Because I have a figure that I've been collecting over the past two years of. Yeah, mine's a, mine's about fifty two. I'm 52, at, 53. I'm at 51 point something, I believe. So I, we're both relatively at the top end of that real MPG range. Yeah. And obviously, just we thought on this trip, we, we've obviously beaten the real world average by some margin. And even the top end of the real MPG by four, four miles per gallon. But obviously, we were... And it is also, if you have a quick look at the abridged footage that we do put in of the um, drive, you'll notice that we were very... It was very kind as far as traffic was concerned. Yeah, we only had one brief little bit of traffic and... It was five ten minutes, if that. Yeah, yeah, it was Bit nothing of really. Works, yeah, it? and also just a, a merge lane, so two mm. lanes going into one, which doesn't help matters, but it is what it is. And I say I'm happy with fifty nine point one. I think we did a quite a good achievement there. Just I for, do. Yeah. Just for driving normally, I'm sure we could have got it higher if we'd have been really hyper miling it. But it was too long of a journey to be. If you'd have put me around. on the spot and said, right, driving like you normally do, which I was. Would you be able to get 500 miles out of a tank in the Fiesta, considering it's not a massive tank? No, so it is only a small tank. Is it was it 50 liters? Uh, it less, well, just slightly less, I think, isn't something like that. So yeah, it's not it's not a massive tank. No, and as it norm, normally, and I do run mine to empty quite frequently. Yeah, I get around 424, 30 miles out of a tank. Yeah, uh, and on this instance, we had, we rolled into the uh, into the petrol station as it ticked on to zero yes we did yeah. uh, and uh, that was 509 point something miles i've got the number up i'll put it up on screen exactly. it was over 500 yeah it was 509 though. miles yeah. which i think is impressive for a small car small oh, me too. Tank. Yeah, absolutely yeah so that actually does lead us on nicer to one of the things we we're looking at is obviously we can compare our real world numbers to what other people say they're getting so what we thought is we'll just quickly look at what the new Fiesta so obviously the, the next generation one which came out in 2017 same engine everything like that mm-hmm. but it has a sixth gear yes now obviously we've both debated for a long time that we I think it's safe to say we both love our Fiestas yeah and honestly most of the car genuinely thrills me good reliability as you say rel- it's good MPG etc but we both have always commented that we thought a sixth gear would help matters. Yeah, because the Ford Focus with the same engine has a sixth gear, so yeah. they can do it. Whether it, and obviously the Fiesta ST has six gears, so they can fit a six speed in there. Yeah, uh, and I think they should have done. But the new one, anyway, the new one they've done it. They've sorted that problem. It has a sixth gear. Now I've just noticed the real MPG figures here. It's not. <laughs> no, no. The, the bottom end is slightly higher. It's 0.4 higher at 34 MPG compared yeah. to 33.6. But the top end is actually less. 
So ours was 55.5 and that's 55. Now, one of the things I do want to say at this point is obviously the amount of cars that make up this average of real world MPG is probably a lot smaller because obviously there's been less time to put in that line. Yeah, to get that thing in. To get that yeah. figure. So, so the real world MPG is actually 0.3 less. So it's 44.4 for the new Fiesta compared to 44.7 yeah. for ours. But yes, like you mentioned, it's a much newer car. So the actual submissions on it are much, much, much less. Exactly, yeah. So that I think over time will creep up slightly. Yeah. Um, and it, they are claiming it's around about 75% of what the official figures claim. Yeah. Because the official MPG from Ford actually is less than what ours is. So it yeah, actually so says... I imagine, I imagine the test has changed then. Yeah, yeah, so I think it has because people were complaining about it. So it's gone up to 60 point... Well, down to 60.1. But if you notice, say for example, in these sort of real world figures, if you look at the very top end at 55.0, on the very bottom end of the official ones of 57.7, that's very close yeah, to, to the actual manufacturer's claimed MPG. Yeah. And like with ours... We obviously then got above what the real world one maximum were. Yeah. So if we were to, for instance, do this trip in the new Fiesta, same engine, everything like that, and drive exactly the same again, I imagine, I'm, I'm sure we could beat that. I'm, I imagine we could tip into the 60s. Yeah. With the new Fiesta, with the, but because I imagine the sixth gear would play in quite nicely with the type of driving that we were doing, as yeah. you say, because you were stretching your legs and you were on nice big air roads and motorway. You can knock it into sixth if you've got cruise control, if you want to do it by foot, just stick it under the speed limit and let it tick away. Yeah, which we obviously did and it did pay dividends looking at these things. Mm. So what as well we thought we would do is just compare this to sort of... Obviously, we haven't driven these cars on extensive trips to know, but we're looking at the Honest John numbers here of sort of what we call mildly hot hatches, sort of maybe your ST lines type ones or your go uh, Golf GTEs and things yeah. like that. So not the full-fledged GTIs and Rs and STs. Well, we are going to look at the well, we are gonna, but And we are going to look at a fully-fledged GTI, but we decided to include it because we feel that its brief still matches what we're on about here. Yeah, so... The first one I think we should do is the UP GTI. Yeah. On the basis that it is similar to what we were doing. It's a one litre engine with a turbo, and it, well, theirs is 115 horsepower compared to the 125, but not far off. I mean, look, it's a GTI that is designed to be run by someone who doesn't have a massive budget. So yeah. it is gonna ha it is gonna purport to have decent economy. So you know, yeah. you can get yourself a GTI, a bit of tartan, you know, yeah. have a good laugh. But when you're going to work, you're gonna get good figures. Well, the the one thing I will say is obviously the up is a much lighter car than the Fiesta, which will help it in this. However, the official MPG from VW is fifty eight point nine. Yes. So it's not much better, but the real world MPG, what sort of people are getting. It ranges between 35.8 and 54. And I also think it's probably worth speculating as well. Um, the, again, the up it probably doesn't have as the same amount of uh, respondent size as the Fiesta either. So again, no, the one it's thing it doesn't tell us is how many respondents have gone into making up this average MPG figure. So Yeah, so now this hit could be... It could be two or three. They've got an average and it's got a range, so yeah. obviously more than one. Exactly, yeah. So it's more than <laughs> one person who's put it in, yeah. Yeah, but and obviously I don't see that many uh, up GTIs around despite them having a mega waiting list. You don't see them And maybe that often. By, by the looks of the way that this category is working, potentially they drop the 115 engine into more models now. I'm not sure. But yeah, potentially. potentially. But that is the engine anyway. Yeah. So... Um, it's getting 81% of what it's claimed. That's pretty good. Which is, a, which is better yeah, than the Fiesta. that's pretty it's good. Yeah. Again, but we don't know the source size, and we haven't experienced it ourselves on a long drive to comment on that. Um, but it is interesting to know that, obviously, even with sort of the, it may even be the newer tests with these ones, that the real-world MPG is never what the manufacturer claims. Now, it's not a surprise... No, no, I wouldn't say so. But that's not too far off. You're getting 80% of what they claim you're going to get. No, if I was driving around in my up and, you know, it involves some city driving, some stop start, etc., etc., and I had a look and I got 47.4, I wouldn't be 
totally disheartened. I think the reason I get over 50 MPG regular away is because obviously, given where we live and given my commuting to work, there is a lot of motorway and A-road driving, which lends itself to improving yeah, like, that economy. Like so, my bit is, there's a few 30 mile an hour bits, but other than that, I'm on big 60 mile an hour A-roads. So taking that into consideration, and if I was just doing sort of town driving with a bit of A-road or whatever, yeah, that wouldn't fuss me. No, I, right I think it's that. perfectly yeah, reasonable. That'd be all right. Um, the next one I think we should look at is the Golf GTE. Mm. Now, obviously, for those of you that know, it does have a petrol and electric motor to assist the engine. Yeah. But you can do it in electric mode only. Yeah. Um, so this this one is where it gets interesting. Now, it does actually give us the figure for this one, so 54 people. It's not a big thing, but 54 people have submitted their numbers for this. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> now, this is where it does, makes me laugh a slight little bit. So... Their official VW claimed numbers is 156.9 mpg. This reminds me of the numbers they used for um, the BMW i8. Yeah, and they were struggling to get over 35, if I remember. Yeah, but that being said, and this is where you need to take a step back, because we're just looking at the GTE there. The real world average is 72.4. Yeah. Now, taking the official mpg out of context... That's still really, really good. Yeah. That's but, really good. But saying that, my dad gets more than that out of a two-litre diesel Mondeo. With no electric assist, nothing, and a heavier, bigger car. Yeah, that, that's true, but that being said, your dad is only one man. He is. This is an average of yeah. 54 respondents, and that they may true. have a and variety to, and to be, of driving to be fair, styles. To be fair, the real world one does go up to 88, so some people are getting 88 MPG. And let's put this into context as well. Looking at the spread of numbers from the people who've submitted their figures to this, the very bottom was 57 the worst that they've had submitted is still better than the best I've ever got out of my Fiesta. Yeah. So that puts it into a bit of context of yeah. it is good at what it does. Yeah. Now, the, obviously, the one thing that probably people will complain about is how on earth do VW get a number of 156.9 mpg when in the real world you're never ever going to get close to that. Exactly. It's a bit of a pinch of salt. I think maybe it probably highlights the weaknesses in the official tests that they run for these hybrid cars, potentially. Yeah. But at the same token, if you're getting a real-world average out there of 72.4, yeah. I would be over the moon with that. Yeah. So, it's, you know... It's relatively cheap to so run. Let's be real here. Yeah. Yeah. So in the real world, I'd be happy with that. But then again, when you look at what it's supposed to get... Maybe you're the tests. Lot, yeah, the yeah. tests need to be changed, which... It's another topic I think we can uh, Yeah, discuss. we could definitely go yeah, into and that. look at how they detail. actually do it. Yeah. Um, so, one obviously other thing now. Because they brought out the new Fiesta ST recently, and that is actually now a three-cylinder, and even a cylinder deactivation down to two, Yeah. we thought, is this now going to be any closer to ours? Yeah, your boggle, your yeah. boggle three-cylinder. Yeah, have they got it down to sort of the old one-litre... Um, sort of figures. Now it does have a one and a half liter engine with 200 horsepower, uh, mm. obviously turbocharged and everything like that. Um, Ford themselves do claim 47.1, so it's nowhere near what the EcoBoost engine is claiming. Sure, it's obviously nearly 20 below. Exactly, but that being said, fair enough. I mean, you know what you're getting into. Yeah. So the real world, we've had, uh, we've had a range again from between 30 and 45 mpg. Mm -hmm. So if people at the top end are getting 45, they're only 2 mpg off. Yeah. And again, it depends. Is, with it being, I know when I had my ST, I didn't drive it economically. You got. You said though, when you were on the motorway in your ST, you could get relatively. Oh good yeah, economy. you would. I, I would easily get over 47 comfortably. Yeah. Comfortably, um, but obviously then because the rest of the time I was driving it on country roads and having a bit of fun, you do rev it out a bit and yeah, exactly. that, that yeah, affects yeah. it. So, yeah, if you tried, you probably could get that, I think. But obviously, people drive these to have fun. That's the point of the car. Now, obviously, they have got the figure up here of the number of MPGs that have been submitted. It's only six. Yeah, it is only six. It it's is a only It's a brand six. new car. Exactly. So, so when you compare that to the GTE, where they had 50 yards in there, obviously, the respondent rate is lower for this because it's a newer car, less people have it, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. In a couple of years' time, or even a year's time, once you see a lot more of these on the road and people submitting... It's, it I would think, be worth us circling back think, yeah, we'll come back round to have a look at that. But even still, if people are getting 45, even out of them six, then I'd take it. It's interesting because if I was getting towards the top end of that of 45, I wouldn't be complaining. But if I was getting the average of 36.6, .6, 
Honestly, I would actually be a little bit, not necessarily disappointed, but with all of the obviously marketing in the campaign about the fact that obviously it is only a three part and it's got cylinder deactivation, yeah. it would actually knock the wind out of my sails a little bit, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, but I will guarantee you, I reckon you would get at the top end of it, if not more. No, my driving style would probably lend me to try get towards the top end of that. Yeah. Actually, e I think my driving easy. style would probably... I could probably do okay. Yeah. To be fair, though, I know obviously they do, do a bit of marketing on it being a bit of an economical hot hatch, but it's not the point of the car at the uh, end exactly. of the day, Exactly. No, I'm not going to no. hold it again. You buy it. this no. car to have fun, and having fun in a car usually means revving it out, flooring it, and enjoying it. The economy is a bonus. Yeah. That's you, the thing. If you have a few, if you do do a long journey and drive normally, you'll probably comfortably get that. Exactly. So the economy is a bonus. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... I think this will bring us on nicely now to our second topic because one thing we've just obviously at the time we are filming this the Audi RS6 the new one mm. has just been launched now I'm excited about this I've always been a fan of the RS6 I think it's a cracking car we'll give you a few numbers on it in a second but um, we were going to sort of look at some of our favorite estates because we yeah. always prefer an estate to an SUV it's something we both can agree on there yeah definitely um so it, this won't just be hot estates. There's a even though it just turned out. I, to I be, say, but, yeah, to be fair, most of these yeah. in their day and even today hold up as fast estates. Yeah. So yeah. we just thought we'd have a bit of luck, and we'll also give a few stats on the new RS6 as well. So um, if you want to, you, you can go through them, and then we'll look at some of our favourites from the past, plus another new one as well, just to compare this with. Okay. Yeah. So do you want to do some of the numbers for the new one? Sure. Yeah, so yeah. brand new RS6. Um, essentially, it's a four-litre twin-turbo petrol engine. Yep. So, as you say, interestingly about this one, though, it's boosted by a mild hybrid system. 48-volt yep. belt alternator slash starter. That's what they're phrasing it as a mild hybrid system. Um, yeah, it can bring back about 16 brake horsepower, apparently. Yeah. So, it is very minimal in terms of what it will do, but it's nice to see manufacturers, you know, yeah. adding, these like little, got... adding these little tweaks on. Looks like it's got cylinder deactivation as well, which is great. So as you said, yeah. they're all try basically trying to boost that fuel economy. Yeah. Um, now we've had a look that obviously, although power is up to one to 591 brake horsepower from the previous standard model, it's actually down from the performance variant of the previous yeah, model. Yeah, so the, the new one has um, 591 whereas the old performance edition did 596 yeah however they have increased torque it's now at 700 newton meters of torque yeah which is well what you could i don't know what the old the one was but yeah you that, could you, yeah. you you change the rotation of the earth yeah. exactly so yeah. again not to 60 3.6 seconds outrageous yeah it's an estate car that does spit. I consider that you super You can bring your kids speed. along to vomit in the back. Yeah, which they yeah. would if you're accelerating that fast. Again, it's obviously been, with it being German, it's restricted to 155 miles an hour. Yeah. That's just the standard there. I'm sure if you, oh yeah, I know, it's just there. Yeah. So you can extend it to 174 or 189.5. That's stupid. That's mental. Yeah, that's an estate car that is doing 190 miles an hour. It's, oh, no, it's very impressive as well, I will state that. Yeah. It's a very impressive engineering feat. But we both immediately started discussing, obviously, with the power being slightly down from the performance variant of the previous generation of this car, with, obviously, there's been a power war going on for quite a while now. Yes, that When has. is enough enough? Yeah. As in, sh you can't use that on the real world. No, no, it is four-wheel drive, so it might be able to get off the line quick and things like that. But like I say, in a real-world scenario, where do you need that much power? I mean, Other than a German autobahn. That's the thing. I've driven cars, as you say. I've driven your old Fiesta ST, and that had 200. Well, it was 220. It was 220 yeah. by the time you were done, but I think I probably drove it before the mount tune kit. Doesn't you really, yeah. Point is, it was more than enough. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was... I cannot envisage needing more than that in the real world. No. In fact, with my standard Fiesta putting out, you know, under 150 horsepower, still enough for me. Yeah, you do. Well, if you do stick to speed limits, you can comfortably do it with that power. But um, I guess, obviously, they designed this for the German autobahns and things like that, and they'll just fly down it. Interestingly, with this one, it's the first time it's ever been sold in America. Mm. Now, this, I know a lot of American car YouTubers and things like that, and also all the people who are big on social media, have been begging Audi 
to sell the RS6 in the US. Yeah. And now they've finally got it. So that is going to fly off the shelves. Well, they, I, don't, I honestly don't think they'll ever have any in stock. As soon as it's in, it's gone. Now, you see, I like the styling. I, think oh, I do. I like the styling, but um, as you say, I think it's quite aggressive and things like that. Um, I prefer the styling of my choice of estate that we're going to talk about in a little while. Yes. Well, for I, me, yeah. because I prefer a little bit more subdued in some respects. But either way, I do like the styling and I appreciate the technology. Yeah, so again, it just brought us on to this little topic of we wanted to look at some of the other estates that we actually probably both do agree we actually quite like. Yeah, all I, of them. yeah we both like um, these. Yeah. Now, the main competitor, I would say, to the RS6, given it's probably the only other hyper estate you can get, is mm. the Mercedes E63 S wagon. Yeah. Now, again, V8 engine, um, like it is in the RS6. But now, obviously, this is slightly older now. So if they do bring out a new one, I assume it's going to compete. But you can spend up to 108, 108 grand on this, which scares me slightly. Note to 60 is also 3.6 seconds as well, though. it will be a great race between them. It would. And, I, well, I think it's only a matter of time before uh, a certain other YouTube channel um does uh, does it between them as soon as they get their hands on one yeah <laughs> interestingly enough 25 mpg claimed claimed yeah but so, as you say if you scroll up to the top though you've got some here we go so there's some power outputs here with the regular one putting out 563 which is a little bit less than the rs6 yeah but that's but the regular one if you look at the s1 packing 604 brake horsepower yeah now i suspect this is slightly heavier than the audi i don't have any weight figures but that'll probably be why it's it's got. Although, no, the S1 is three and a half seconds to 60, so it's actually quicker. Yeah. But we should say as well, that's the standard RS6. They probably will bring out a performance exactly, version. Exactly, yeah. So it'll so all balance it, yeah, out. It'll, it'll, it'll it. all even itself, it'll all even even itself time. out, yeah. Now, I'm a big fan of the way the E63S looks. Agreed. Um, yeah. I, now, here we go. Here's 850 con- newton metres of torque. I've just seen that. Now, here we go. Here's a controversial one for you. Um, I prefer the styling of the E63 to the new RS6. As much as I like the new RS6, I, th- I like the E63 it is, it is a little su- bit more subdued. It is very subtle, isn't exactly. it? And I like subtle styling. So yeah, it, it is, is very more, subtle. Yeah. I like it. Don't get me wrong. I think my personal choice would be the RS6 just just because it is an RS6. I like the looks as well, just slightly more, but yeah. it's the one I would go for. Um, I'm going to let you do the next one because I know you're a big fan of this car. Yes, so um, if we just have a quick nausea up at the top, it is the Jaguar XFRS um, yeah. estate. Yes, yeah. well, I think they call, call it shooting, shooting brake, brake or something, don't they? Yeah. Or sport brake, whatever. Obviously, they don't make it anymore, which is no. a bitter disappointment for me because I absolutely love the styling of it. Yeah, it's and bonkers. Yeah. As you say, 5 litre supercharged V8, punching out 542 brake horsepower. Now, I'm actually quite surprised, considering this is a discontinued car. That isn't an awful lot down on the new estates that are being rocked no. about. Um, yet, yeah, as you say, it's got 502 foot-pound of torque. It's going to get you shifting, isn't it? Yeah. Not, a 60 ta- not a 60 time of 4.6 si- yeah. seconds. Yeah. So yeah, that is actually a full second slower than the other two, but it's a lot older. And it's, I tell you what, the sound is to die for. Oh, it's filthy, isn't, isn't it? Isn't it? I love. I'm yeah. a. I'm a sucker for a supercharged engine as it is. Yeah. So Jaguar V8s are always always sound good. Yeah. But this in particular, it was absolutely insane, and it would drift forever. <laughs> Literally, would drift forever. Yep, yeah, as you say, it punches it through an eight-speed ZF gearbox, so it'll be lovely as well. And it's got a top speed that's limited to 186 mile an hour. Again, and this brings me back to my topic of now that's still more than enough than I've ever used. Well, if you have the limiter on the other two, it's way faster than them. And also, even when you take the limiter off the Audi, it's only three or four miles an hour quicker. Now, I'm sure dynamically it doesn't hold up in any way compared to the other ones as far as cornering is concerned and I'm, things like that. I don't know. Uh, it's I, older, I, yeah. you know, it's one of those, isn't I be, it? I bet for fun, this will blow them out of the park. I, I like it. Yeah, and yeah I, so I would a, definitely A car it. from history that I love. Now, out of all the estates throughout history, my personal preference, the one I would buy, is that one. Yeah. Regardless of what else we were discussing, obviously, in, in a second, that's the one I'd buy. Yeah, me too, yeah. If I had, it was my money, I'd have it. 
So the next one, I know will be a favourite amongst a lot of people here. It gets, it's got basically a cult following. They never met many of them. They've held the value quite well because of that. Yeah. Um, and they've never met one since, even with now two generations of M5 coming after this. Yeah. They haven't done another one. So obviously, as I've just given away, this is the um, BMW M5, the E61 uh, Touring. Yeah. Big V10 engine. Exactly. Which screams forever. Naturally aspirated, five litre, came yeah. from F1, the famous one, isn't it? Yeah. Now, I think the exact number was 507. When you go through the little computer, you could pick how much power your engine put out. Yeah. I think it was, about, it was 507 at 8,000 RPM, which is, again, it's an old car. It's two, three generations old. But, it, but this is 2006 or whatever, isn't it? This yeah. is the noughties, and it's putting out figures like that. And as you said, the sound is insane. Yeah, big V10 engine, 507 horsepower, 8,000 RPM. Again, the styling-wise on these, I've never been a huge fan of that generation of 5 Series myself. No, me I neither. I think it's a bit... A bit bubbly, A bit isn't bubbly. It? Yeah. I don't hate it, but I'm not a massive... I prefer the newer ones, if I'm honest. But... The estate one in particular, what what more would you want? Five drills power, say V10, you fit all your kids, dog in the back, anything you want, and you can blast down the motorway. And this did do over 200 miles an hour. Yeah. When they de-restricted it, it would do over 200. Granted, I expect it's phenomenally bad on economy. Oh, yeah. Going back to our previous topic. There's a lot of things as well about the uh, reliability issues with the yeah, engine. I was about to say, like I did, that, yeah, I was about but, to say that. I did. I do remember it being talked about, about having certain reliability problems. Yeah, but again, it's an older car. Still, yeah. still not that. If you, I suppose like any car, if you look after it, it will look after you. You've got to remember as well, it's sort of like a thoroughbred V10, F1-derived technology as well. You're going to need to look after it for it yeah. to stay together. Serve, I mean, it, service it properly. Exactly. You know, do your regular oil changes and... You know, it'll maintain. serve you in the long run. Yeah, it'll look after you. I think, I probably amongst our fans that you see going to be between the RS6 and that, I would imagine as a as a favourite all time estate. Probably, yeah. I know a few listeners um, who, who actually I know personally would pick that uh, over any of them. I think. Yeah. Um, but that's it for the sort of hyper estates that are our favourites. Obviously, there is a couple more we could discuss, but they're just the ones we we like in particular. They were the ones that first come to mind for yeah. us, I think. Yeah. So I think that's probably a good place to round it off there. Um, obviously, let us know in the comments what you think and what your uh, car might do on it's MPG. If you've done anything like that before. Exactly, we'd, we'd yeah. Like, if you've done like, a long journey, we'd love to hear yeah, about it. Yeah, we'd love to hear yeah. about it and let us know what numbers you're putting out. Uh, and again, what, what your favourite estate is. So uh, all the links, as always, are in below for all the social media and everything like that. And so I will respond if, uh, if I get any comments or anything like that. Um, and we'll see you next week. Yeah, see you next week, guys. See you later. Bye.